code. Uh, okay, what is mobile map technology? Mobile map technology is a library, it's an open source library. Uh, the repository is here. Uh, we have a GitHub repository. Probably we go to change to a Clips repository in the next in the next few weeks. Um, you can you have here all the codes and um, information about what we with the code and the issues, the pull requests, and a little wiki in with in with a get starting and uh, how to configure uh, the the library to work with with it. Um, if uh, you can find in on GitHub Blog Free Mobile, it's it's very easy to to find. Uh, okay, uh, this this library is developed uh, to build native map 3D applications. They are it's 3D because the world is not flat. The world is in 3D, and the map is going to be in all of them in 3D. Uh, you can build native applications and that runs on any device. The, the idea is you can reach uh, any device that can that can work with a map. Uh, we have to face a lot of problems to work to work in in, a, in the native way and to work on the mobile. Uh, the first uh, the first of problems is the fragmentation. Uh, the the people that that uh, who is working on this mobile for mobile now start the we have fragmentation in the hardware and fragmentation in the software. We have a thousand of different devices <coughs> with thousand of different screens with uh, different processors, different memory, etc. Um, we have problems also with the fragmentation of the software. Uh, different operating systems and different programming languages. And this is a very big problem when, when you uh, when you going to start to develop a map application. Uh, we face that. Another problem is the performance. Uh, the maps, um, concretely the 3D map, are a very high performance uh, applications. You need to to do that to do a lot a lot of things with the with the device. You need to uh, to download a lot of tiles, a lot of information. Uh, all of this is in real time. You need to <coughs> you need to do a lot of uh, async tasks. Um, Different things that uh, you need to 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 use the 100% uh, of of the device can do for you. Um, this is the reason why we have developed a native a native application, uh, a native library. <coughs> uh, most of the approach for for do for develop mobile maps is with uh, web applications on the mobile. But this approach is not working always because in, in a lot of cases we need a higher performance. Another problem is the usability. All the maps that are uh, that was developed for, for the web uh, are thinking in usability of the web. But the, the usability on the mobile devices is different. Uh, the resolution of your finger is different of the resolution of the mouse. Uh, this is uh, one of the, of the cases, but, but clearly it's absolutely different to develop mobile uh, mobile uh, application than web application. And the other uh, the other idea is easy to code. Uh, we need to uh, we need that you can start with the with the library in a very easy way. Because the, the problem is complex. How we can develop native application in all platforms? Uh, we the the magic here is with the code translation. We develop all the OpenGL because we have a three D a three D library. Uh, we have a lot of OpenGL work. All this work, all this complex work, and all this code is developed in C plus plus. Why C++? Because with C++ we can work on iOS on iOS devices, and C++ uh, you can compile. Uh, you have a C++ compiler on any platform. Um, uh, it's the minimal common. 
band. We have the core in C++ with this core with you can you can see the map from iOS and we translate the code to Java. And we have a Java API. A Java native API, but that is developed in C++. Uh, the Android developers only have to work with a Java API. They have to they don't have to worry about how the uh, how the C++ code is, is done. The the code is legible, but is for for us it's like a compiled code. And we we make another code translation with Java VT and we read all the web, all the web devices. Uh, at the end of the day we have um, an iOS APA, an Android APA, and GWT APA. Uh, when you start uh, an application, you can share a lot of code. For example, the GWT, the web application and the Android application can share uh, the 80% of code because you only have to develop the user interfaces. Um, if you develop the your application also translating code, you can share also a lot of code between iOS and native. Uh, the C++ code, um, we have um, we have uh, some abstract classes classes that allow us to connect new platforms. Um, you can we can connect, for example, we have a, a, a port for Windows 8 that is working, is not completely working uh, now currently, but we only have to compile the C++ in the Windows environment, and in this way we can compile we can we can have uh, in uh, on any platform can when C++ runs uh, as, it's, as, I, as I told something is multi-platform this is the iOS device this is on Android uh, this is a, a typical use case where we have 3D models we have a map we have terrain and we have another three D model that is moving uh, to th is the plane that is is harvesting the data from the plane and is is, fly is flying. And this is a uh, a map with three D symbology. We have a, we have a lot of different types of symbology. Uh, this is a web, and this is working on Google Glasses. Uh, uh, how that like the Google Glasses Android, we only have to to run the to run the platform on, on the Google Glasses and it's working <laughs> slowly but works. This is a different view that we have. This is a 3D globe view which is typical of the Google Earth. Uh, but it's the, the globe view. This is the scenario that is the uh, part of the terrain. It's a scenario with a digital model of terrain and this is a flat view. It's flat but it's 3D also and you can move uh, in a similar way that the canvas of JavaScript. Uh, we can show any kind of data or geodata. Um, we don't have developed the parser, but we have developed uh, a diff different tools to translate the data to optimize it, uh, optimize it format that we use to show on the on the uh, why we don't we don't develop parsers because there are a thousand or parsers of data that works very very good, and we only need to see well on our platform. This is uh, this is uh, normal pictorial data. This is uh, as I said previously a uh, 3D buildings from OpenStreetMap and terrain. This is a point cloud, raster data, 3D models, uh, typical data for for the. Uh, there are another different uh, capabilities that that have the the library in order to to build mobile applications. For example, we have a complex con a complex control of of uh, of, of cache to to save data. You can develop uh, offline completely offline application. All the things that that you can add uh, to a server, uh, we can save on on a SQLite database and the uh, database are interchangeable between platforms. 
So that is para, para you can prepare the database, and after that you have the the mobile application. Uh, normally, the mobile application is not uh, only a client problem. It's a client and server problem. No, there are all the mobile applications are different. Always the capabilities are different. Um, you have to uh, you have to follow a different strategy. And the library gives you the possibility of implement all this kind, all all these things. Uh, as I said previously, uh, we can we can manage the cache. We uh, ah, well, it's very easy to do. Uh, we have camera and model animations. Uh, we have different utilities for for develop the, the application. For example, tags. Uh, we have developed a hat for for glasses, and a lot of a lot of tools for trans for transfer to transfer the data. This is for an example. This is one of the last things that we have done. It's a symbology. It's a, uh, has a video. This is it's on iOS. This is a, so there are markers, but never overlap it in them. Yeah, it's a example of symbology. It's a simple, a uh, different symbology. We have also uh, different libraries uh, that work uh, with in our library and that works in other with other software. For example, we have a library of vector tiles. Uh, this uh, oh, yeah. this library uh, we get the data from a PostGIS PostGIS database. We have a process. Uh, we make a pyramid of vector tiles, and you can s you can serve this these tiles in a normal web server. Like uh, all the the format of, of the files are the JSON, and you can serve in a normal web server. Uh, it's it's there is a static data. Uh, this is an example. We're working on on Open Layer Three. Is the the pyramid instead instead of of, of rasterized data is is direct is this directly a vector data? You can, for example, you can change the symbolization uh, uh, on the fly. Okay, this is a, this use case is data from ports uh, from this from the currents and see uh, all the things that you can have in the port. And it's in real time. You can use that in real time. This is a web application. This uh, is one of the one of our last uh, development. It's a library to show point cloud, uh, a very huge, huge point cloud from uh, 3D point cloud. I want to see you, show you demo working. This point cloud is uh, 150 million point clouds. Um, uh, we pre-process the data. Uh, we serve always uh, points that are meaningful. If uh, you go, we are serving only 10 points. But this point are saving the shape of the of the point cloud, and uh, we have developed the um, the preprocess the preprocess library, and we have developed a streaming server. Uh, depending on where you are, we serve only the points that you need to show your data. Um, for example, the points are coming, and it's completely three D. You can show that on this is web. It's the last, it's the last part of our library, but you can show this on on Android, on iOS, in the same way with the same code. Well, the points are coming from from the server. Uh, 
how we do that, um, we have a, um, we, we get the data, we import the data, data to DataDB, uh, which is very, very fast. Um, we need a very fast database to, to process the data because they are very huge, always the, the point cloud. Um, import and we order the point cloud. Uh, we prepare a pyramid in the same way that, in the same way that the vector child. Um, we have a, a, a server for the point cloud streaming. Uh, we have a native support on the MMT. Um, as we said previously, we always save the shape of the point cloud. This is another example. This is a point cloud on, an, on a, uh, a local point cloud that is saved on the, on the device. Uh, oh, this is it. This is with my phone yesterday. The point cloud, the point cloud is is uh, saved on the on the device. Oh, it's, oh, it's parsing the data. Oh. You see, it's very fast. Uh, if someone wants to play, I, I can <laughs> give you the. This is a different approach. It's, it's local. It's the, the point cloud that's saved on the device. Uh, and the other example is on a server. The server is the server is a laptop uh, that is in the in, in the office of my partner. Uh, it's working now. Um, I want to show you a video with different. This is the this is the application. That application is on the Google Play Store uh, and also on the Apple Store. Um, it's a summarize of different capabilities of library. Um, but uh, uh, this is raster layer. Different raster layer. Uh, you can use any raster layer with any kind of type. For example, this is a CardDB. A CardDB layer. But, uh, it's very easy to, to show to show Rust layer. This this is two two blows working the same time in on an Android device. You can put eight or nine or ten what you want. This example is is a. Um, it's only a 3D model, a 3D model and raster and raster data together, and this is a scenario. This is all, all of this is on Android, that uh, where is where we have the worst performance, and it's a very good performance in, in any case. This is vectorial data, they are your JSON files. Uh, what page is where? Uh, this is um, 3D symbolization. As, we as you have a 3D environment, you can show the data in very different ways. For example, like this. And you can make change the the three D models are with time, etc. Uh, this is uh, another point cloud. We we showed a lot of point clouds. Um, um, this is a, an example. It's a use case that is uh, moving max for for the planes. This is uh, this is a plane flying. Um, this is the, the plane taking off for, from the Boston Airport, and the the application is getting the data from the instruments of the airplane, and we show this this map 
could be show uh, could be shown on the on the screens of the plane or also on the on the devices of the passengers. Um, this is a, the the plane moving in the real in the in the real way. For example, this is a, the view that you have about the uh, uh, below the plane when it's taking off. The the image is from from a box. It's a normal raster data source, and there are a lot of different kind of views. Uh, what the, the special thing of this case uh, is that we have a 3D model. Uh, we have a lot of different kind of data working together. Uh, works on, on any device. It could be a very good performance. And I think it's all. If you have any questions, uh, it's the moment. And if, if you need something, you can write me an email or whatever. Thank you.